But let's kick things off and talk a little bit about what's happening with Novartis. The shares are lower this morning. This after the drug maker reported second quarter earnings that beat. It raised its guidance. This is a bit of a surprise to me. I'm trying to figure out why a stock of this scale is down by 2.24% on the back of this. There is but one person to ask the answer and, and to try and get the answer to that question. He's called Sam Fazelli. He's sitting next to me uh, from Bloomberg Intelligence. Can you help me? <laughs> I wish I could. No. I mean, look, the numbers aren't the reason pretty clearly because they beat very handsomely on operating profit, about 7%. Yep. Uh, sales were, what, 1% better? Clearly, they're doing a great job of cost management. Yep. Uh, most of the drugs did really well, maybe yep. one or two little hiccups in terms of comparison to consensus. So why is it, and, and at the mid-year, it's looking like it's going to go towards a 20% operating profit um, uh, r rise this year, and consensus at 15. So what's there not to like? Um, I can only imagine that maybe some people were expecting even more, or maybe they expected that the guidance would be m more um, than where we are. Yep. It's also possible that one of their key drugs called Pluvicto for prostate cancer has been slower than expected. It's one of the growth drivers. Cosentix will eventually slow down over time, which is their biggest drug. Mm. Um, so it's possible that, that people have taken a little bit of a um, uh, you know, negative view of better. that. Right. Well, also, as, as you mentioned there, some of the analysts I'm reading this morning, you know, this just in on the Bloomberg terminal, citing the fact that another guidance raise was expected. That's a tough, that's a tough Which, reputation to have right. for a business, isn't it? That what? you're just expecting these companies to keep raising guidance. Right, but they gave it. They, they brought it. I mean, already the 15% growth that analysts were expecting was above what the previous guidance was. But what they've given now is better than that. I mean, um, it's just how much more could, you, could a company do? I mean, 20% operating profit growth in one year for a company this size is pretty respectable. Can we talk about some of the other moves in the last 24 hours as well, oh, outside, yeah. aside of Novartis? Uh, this is coming from, I believe, Roche announced yesterday of an uh, early stage trial for those obesity drugs, getting in on mm. the obesity gains. Novo Nordisk, Eli Lilly, of course, taking a pretty big hit off the back of it. Does that sustain? Does Roche get to that level? I mean, uh, look, I've, I'm not used to a world where a large pharma company of that size, of that elk, puts out a phase one trial data, and it's not even full data, yeah. and gets a share price reaction like this. So in the world of obesity, and you, and you get the reaction in Lilly and Novo, I think there's a lot of hot money that comes in various directions. And I suspect what you've seen is some of that either going into Roche and then coming out of Novo Lilly. Honestly, this is a huge market that we all know about. There's going to be lots of opportunity for lots of players. This drug is unlikely to be on the market before 28, 29, by which time Novo and Lilly and others would have had new drugs come along. Yeah. It's a good move, but the share price move does make you look a little bit, you know, did drop my jaw a little bit, so it's, especially given the size of the How Bosch. early stage are we talking about? Like, phase how one. Much phase, how much information do we actually have? How big a trial are we talking about? This is a $22 billion company right. that has moved six nearly seven percent over the last two days phase one phase one means there's a phase two then there's a phase three that, yeah. and these are large phase threes right but yeah. if we start then there's usually a phase four or two in terms of looking back but that's another four or five years and but i think it's all to do with the hotness of the obesity uh, story are we going to see more companies doing this uh, having data, so we no, have no, no, putting, out, putting out phase one data, expecting a pop, getting the algos to trade it, getting the markets excited. Is this the healthcare version of AI? That's, that's yeah, kind of well, exactly. Right. Obesity is definitely the healthcare version of AI, and and it's a real market, just like AI is a real market, right? You can't talk to a company and they tell you, no, we're not doing anything in AI. It never, it does, just doesn't exist. So I think we're going to get a, a very interesting data set from Amgen this year. Uh, on yep. a competitive product, there would be a once monthly injection. You might not even need an oral drug once a day, mm. right? Of course, all of these have room to play. But it just, it just shows how hot the, sect, the, the space is, meaning uh, money coming in and going out, fast money. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. So there might be room for different types okay. of, of medication in this, in, in this field. Sam, thanks very much. Sam Fazelli from Bloomberg Intelligence.